Hello Unigame fans, Steam has made the Boomer Shooter an official tag, so this list will have a number of these, where I have also mixed in some first person slashes slash RPGs, with first person survival, horror and adventure games to be in other compilations, where I also have release date updates to games that I've covered in the past, so let's begin with Brutal Fate, a game that is said to be inspired by the games of the 80s and 90s and it shows, in terms of visuals, animations and even speed of the game. You play as a marine sent to take over a local government, but then suddenly find yourself fighting demonic aliens, having the classic weapons like assault rifles, shotguns, grenade launchers and more. I've slotted in first person melee titles here since there were not enough of them to warrant their own video, with a fantastic looking title being Unawake determined the result of an eternal war between heaven and hell and change the course of humanity forever as you battle enemies from both sides, with the hack and slash action here looking great but is supposed to have a tactical aspect as well in terms of positioning and when you use your special abilities. This video is brought to you by Mullet Mad Jack, a super fast paced first person shooter with an awesome aesthetic and theme, being a self styled OVA FPS and draws upon classic anime from the 80s and 90s, instead of Doom and Wolfenstein like its boomer shooter counterparts. Set in the 2090s, humanity and the internet have merged into a new being that requires dopamine every 10 seconds otherwise it will die in a world ruled by ultra wealthy AI robots. You play as the titular character Mullet Mad Jack who has to destroy these robots for the dopamine rush, blasting and kicking your way through the levels. The time limit of 10 seconds forces you to take action otherwise you would just expire, having some brutal execution animations on top of a variety of guns, swords and more. The levels are procedurally generated and you can pick one of three upgrade options after every level to customize your build, with the vibes of this simply being immaculate. There's a full campaign mode here but you can turn off the timer if you want the more traditional experience and it also has an endless mode like in a roguelite so there's something for everyone. If interested, wishlist the game via the link in the description below. Wishlist now. Mullet Mad Jack. A curiosity for first person titles is IGI Origins, another military shooter but this time it has more of a tactical slant set in the world of high stakes espionage. Yes, that means stealth elements here, from silencers, melee, stealth kills and skulking about in the shadows, having quite the classic plot of having to stop an enemy from starting a nuclear war and will be for military buffs. Another fast paced boomer shooter of interest is ASCII, at least I think that's how it's pronounced, in which they've really nailed the visuals and action that is reminiscent of Quick 1. In 90s game fashion, there isn't really any story to speak of as far as the Steam page goes, so I have no idea who you play as or why you are there, so it is all about blasting enemies into giblets with a variety of weapons looking to be a real throwback title. A first person RPG of interest is Arden Fall, one that does remind me of Morrowind, throwing you into a mysterious open world and allowing you to freely explore. This is an RPG through and through, since you can customize your character and even choose their background from assassin, mage, thief and more, with I presume unique abilities or specialties for each character class and how they will be perceived by the world and NPCs. It has an okay low poly look but the colour palette seems a little drab with a ton of dull browns and greens but if you love these open world RPGs, it will be of interest. A gory all action boomer shooter is Coven, one that is of course paying tribute to Blood and Hexen rather than Doom or Wolfenstein, in which you play as a young girl from the 1600s who has been wrongly accused of witchcraft and burned at the stake. 
but has been resurrected by an unknown force and now seeks revenge. It makes us both time period appropriate weaponry as well as magic, in which there are more occult elements like having to consume the flesh of enemies that you kill in order to regain health, being a bloody gory title. A slick looking neon infused cyberpunk title is Tokyo Underground Killer in which you play as the deadly assassin who is fighting against the invasion of a group known as the Flatliners who are terrorizing Tokyo. The action and gunplay here looks awesome, with the katana featuring quite prominently mixing both ranged and melee combat. Additionally, you also have the power of blood magic in which you can drain enemies of their blood and use it to fire off powerful attacks, also having some first person exploration elements and allowing you to explore the city in between missions which is an interesting twist. Some of you might immediately click off due to the visuals of Enchain and while I don't fault you for that, I believe there's something to this game. Yes, the graphics are pretty primitive, even for 90s standards as seen by the games mentioned earlier, but the gimmick here is that you wield a lantern hook in one hand in addition to your primary weapon, using it to grapple and swing for platforming as well as to latch onto enemies and just fling them away. It has verticality inspired by Dark Souls as well as an interconnected non-linear world looking like exploration will be one of the main highlights. One of the titles that came up when I was researching first-person action titles is Monomyth, another first-person dungeon crawling RPG in which you're building melee weapons, spells and bows, delving into the vast interconnected underworld labyrinth in order to battle a great evil that lies at its core. Like some of the RPG heavy titles, you're able to customize and choose which direction to spec in when it comes to your character, ranging from the burly, tanky warrior to the mobile thief or even a powerful mage, where each will tackle situations and enemies quite differently. Here's another boomer shooter of interest in The Last Exterminator, in which you play as a regular, run of the mill, down on her luck pest exterminator who pretty much hits the jackpot, when not just cockroaches invade earth, but alien cockroaches instead, building all sorts of weapons to blast away at her enemies. Evidently, this is an all-action title with ample use of explosions with the visual style here more resembling Duke Nukem 3D rather than Doom or Quake. Not much more to add, so if you love the throwback shooter, do put this on your wishlist. Going in by force. Those of you that are a little bit older like me might remember Apogee Entertainment and 3D Realms since they made and published games back in the DOS days with titles like Duke Nukem, Crystal Caves, Cosmos, Cosmic Adventure, Bio Menace, Rise of the Triad and more, where I played my fair share of those old school platformers growing up, with the naming convention being a little confusing between the two. But the bottom line is, Modern Apogee is pretty much an indie game developer and publisher, but we are talking about Core Decay and 3D Realms here, in which layoffs have affected this company, with the IP holder of Core Decay being laid off recently. But apparently, the game is still in development and might see the light of day. Set in 2089, in which the world has declined to the point of societal collapse, hunt down a mysterious organization and learn more about their plans, which involves sacrificing all that it means to be alive in hopes of preserving the human species. Having a Half Life 1 feel to the game, and I hope it's good. The next game from the developer of Severed Steel is also another high mobility, fast paced first person shooter, but with a more simplified look in Echo Point Nova. 
it seems to be taking place in a fantastical location as well of floating land masses in the skies, but while it looks to have more of a linear corridor style level design, apparently it's supposed to be open world with the dizzying speeds that you move around the environment in looking like one of the appeals. A grim first-person melee title is Eldrimar, looking to be kind of like first-person Dark Souls but doesn't have a stamina meter as far as I can tell. You're exploring the kingdom and battling the undead with the main objective of having to open up a portal such that his people can get back to their homeland and looks promising. I featured Artificial on the channel before, in which this is a first-person physics-based title that is inspired by Half-Life and Portal, with the Half-Life 2 vibes being particularly strong in this one since it has a lot of physics-based puzzles and while not as action-heavy, looks fantastic nonetheless. There have been a number of games attempting to resurrect the spirits of Turok with dinosaur enemies, none of which have hit particularly hard, with of course, Compound Fracture getting on my radar due to the throwback visuals. Instead of those 90s PC shooters that everyone references, this looks like a PlayStation 1 game, even down to the 4x3 resolution in which you're exploring a mysterious facility that is of course filled with dinos. It is set in 1996, in which time travel technology is a thing, where a company was reported to have illegally used it in the play as an investigator sent to find out more. It has survival horror elements like having to scavenge for weapons and equipment as well as more simulation type aspects like being able to break your leg or where a trail of blood will attract predators being a refreshing change of pace. This next title has been in development for quite a long time in which Fallen Aces is a crime noir first person shooter that uses a comic book art style. The Aces in this game references Guardians of the City but they are slowly being taken out one by one, leaving your character to investigate what is happening. That of course involves getting into conflict with 1930s Chicago gangster types using your fists lead pipes, revolvers, tommy guns and more to dispatch of your enemies. It looks kind of awesome and is published by New Blood Interactive who specialises in first person shooters, certainly being a title of interest. Like Enchain mentioned earlier, Effigy has a very low fidelity look as well, although not as severe, but it is very dark for some reason as well, which you will understand based on the setting. It is set on the moon, which is also a prison, which unfortunately has become overrun by a cult of former prisoners. We are now trapped on the moon and must find a way to survive and get home, possibly having to kill their god in the process, so how's that for a compelling setup? Most curiously, it has an interconnected world with exploration being inspired by metroidvanias and the Souls-like games, so expect to find shortcuts and elevators that bring you right back around. However, I'm not sure if there are RPG elements like the equivalent of killing enemies to get souls for upgrades, so progression might just be in the form of getting new weapons and abilities, so despite the visuals, it's still a title of interest. Here's an example of a first person action game that I guess would put it under FPS since in Shady Knight, you are zipping around and slashing enemies with a sword but also have a bunch of medieval weapons like spears, bow and arrows and even a grappling hook but without guns. Everything is a weapon in this game including the environment such as spikes and barrels having an almost DMC type style meter that ranks you on how cool you are, with this having a little bit of neon white vibes. Here's an awesome looking first person shooter with both single and multiplayer support 
in which Out of Action has a good amount of hype behind it, primarily due to the gameplay shown off so far. It is set in a brutal cyberpunk world, which isn't apparent since it's missing the distinct neon pink and blue hues of a stereotypical cyberpunk setting, so I do wonder what effect that will have on the game. From the clips shown off so far, there is a nice variety of weapons, from rifles to pistols, but also swords, throwing knives, and even more fantastical high-tech weapons, along with mobility and movement options like a running slide, as well as being able to shoot through walls. The Steam page, however, is a little scant on details, just listing a number of bullet points, so I don't have a good feel for this, with the news being that its release window has narrowed from just 2024 to Q4 2024. A fantastic looking game from a new developer comprised of industry veterans is Lunar Abyss, in which they've raised $3.5 million in 2021 to make this game, being a first person shooter that is story driven and also has bullet hell combat. It sure has an interesting mix of ideas in which you play as a prisoner whose sentence is to go into the abyss to retrieve forgotten technology, and it quickly becomes apparent why prisoners are given guns and sent on this mission, since there are all sorts of horrible monsters in the dark. As such, it has horror overtones, but still appears to be a largely action-focused title with the brutalist architecture of the environments looking pretty amazing and with bullet hell action resembling Returnal. I'm pretty hyped about this next title since Sulphur is an open world action adventure game that just so happens to be from a first person perspective but has inventory management, a town, NPCs and the whole shebang. It has an interesting low poly look as well as a curious colour palette that is not the most visually appealing but still makes it stand out. There are, of course, mysteries of the world to uncover which is where the exploration comes in, looking like a world that I would enjoy delving into with this getting a release window of 2024, so we should see it later this year. Since we last took a look, Mouse has also gotten a new gameplay trailer in which, of course, it's basically Mickey Mouse FPS but in a noir style art styles make games, and like Cuphead before it, the visuals of this game immediately captured attention since the 1930s rubber hose animation but in first person does stand out, although with headshots and blood, it is on the more violent end of things. This looks much better as compared to the first trailer, with more environmental objects being added in, but we do have to wait a little while for this since it's planned for 2025. Here's a title new to the channel in The Age of Hell, in which you play as a Doomslayer kind of character named the Crusader, being the last of an ancient order sworn to protect the realm from demons, so pick up your hammer, smash your enemies, and prevent the arrival of the Age of Hell. There are religious themes in this title since you're battling demons and have an arsenal of holy weapons, but there is a special game mode in which you can only use the hammer, which will have implications on your tactics. Additionally, it is not a roguelite, but will have a randomized upgrade system, so I have no idea how that would work, but for all the Doom vibes that this is giving off, it's certainly one to keep an eye on. If you played Ion Fury from 2019, I'm sure that you'll be interested in the sequel, Phantom Fury, a direct continuation of that game set many years after prior events, where our heroine Shelley Bombshell Harrison is pulled out of coma and finds herself in a new world with a new looming threat. She has to secure a dangerous artifact known as the Demon Core, and interestingly enough, it's set in the US, so you'll be going to places like Chicago and Albuquerque, which is weird but interesting. It has some bold and crazy weapons, some of which are returning fan favourites like the Bowling Bomb, with it being a throwback but has modern polish as well.
Here's an update on a friend favourite title since Sentry did have an excellent Steam Mix Festival showing and gained quite a number of Steam wishlists from that, all of which are funneling into its Q1 2024 release which should be soon as well. It's an action defense title with co-op support in which you're defending your ship against waves of enemies, being able to build turrets and defenses, weld doors shut and more, combined with the classic first-person shooter action, reminiscent of natural selection. PvE horde shooters have their place, and this looks pretty fun, so I'm curious about the structure of the game and how much variety there will be, and am looking forward to finding out soon. I've been following this developer on Twitter since the Axis Unseen looks awesome, a self-styled heavy metal horror game in a mysterious open world, in which this developer has previously worked on Skyrim, Starfield and Fallout, so an ex Bethesda guy, with this new project looking excellent. It draws from ancient folklore for inspiration in its enemies, with it having some of the most stunning locations that I have seen. It is all about hunting down these creatures, but the developer does also cryptically tease that the hunter is also the hunter. One of the most hyped boomer shooters is Salako that runs on the GZ Doom engine, which has really spawned a whole bunch of modern throwback shooters, having more modern elements as far as I know, while still being able to retain the feel of a game like Doom. However, it is set in a post-apocalypse in which Earth has fallen and humanity has retreated to an underground facility named Salako, but armed invaders have attacked, so it is up to our heroine to fight them off. There is also a deeper, darker secret to the facility itself, which I'm sure you will cover through the course of the game, with, interestingly enough, the action sequences taking inspiration from Fear or First Encounter Assault Recon, which is a classic FPS. There's also an update to its release date, which will be in early access in May this year, with the exact date yet to be revealed, but this has been a very long time coming, so I'm excited for the release. This next title went viral due to the visuals which simulates the body cam of a police officer with the photorealistic look creeping some people out and had others arguing about whether this is a game or not. It is running on Unreal Engine 5 and we have seen a number of such photorealistic games already so the gimmick will wear thin but as of right now, I do still think that it's a title of interest. It's more of a tactical title in which you're solving complex cases also showing off a dialogue system, so I'll be interested to know more. There's exciting news with regards to Agent 64 Spies Never Die as well, since while this throwback shooter was delayed from 2023 to 2024, they did show off a new look at the game which looks awesome. You play as a very Sean Connery looking James Bond type secret agent being called back into action in order to save the world once again, with an epic story campaign to match. Of course, from the title, it is a tribute to the N64 favourite GoldenEye 007, which was why the initial reveal that it was single player only was baffling until October 2023 when the developer announced that split screen multiplayer will be a thing. This was probably the reason of the day and with this final piece of the puzzle seems to be the ideal package so let's hope the execution is great in terms of the game. I love developer Free Lives since you never know what to expect from them, from the brotastic run and gun title Broforce, to the very not safe for work genital jousting, to the reverse city builder Terra Nail, to the in development roguelite brawler stick it to the stickman, so of course, their other in development title Anger Foot is of interest. I believe this is done by having smaller teams within the company itself, with the variety and creativity on show here being very impressive, in which the visual feedback and physics of this game looks awesome, especially with the ability to kick things, looking kind of insane, wacky and just pure awesome. For more indie games, watch this video on upcoming action RPGs.